The Continued Story of Terran, the Assistant Pig Keeper. I'm glad you've stayed to listen. Now sit round as Papa Bear reads a story. Chapter 11 King of the Stones Gurji flung himself to the ground, covered his head with his hands, and whimpered piteously. The creature threw a long, spindly leg over the ledge, and began slowly drawing himself upright. He was more than three times as tall as Terran, and his flabby arms dangled below a pair of knobby, moss-covered knees. With a lopsided gait, he shambled toward the companions. Glue! Terran gasped. But I was so sure. It can't be, whispered Fluter. Impossible. Not little glue. Or if it is, I certainly got the wrong impression of him. Tremble, the quavering voice cried again. You shall tremble. Great Beelin, muttered the bard, who was indeed shaking so much he almost dropped his blade. I don't need to be told. The giant bent, shaded his white eyes against the light of the bobble, and peered at the companions. Are you really trembling? he asked in an anxious voice. You're not doing it just to be obliging. Gurji, meantime, had ventured to lift his hands from his face, but the sight of the creature towering above him made him clap them back again, and set him to wailing louder than ever. Prince Run, however, recovering from his first shock, studied the monster with great curiosity. I say, this is the first I've seen anyone with toadstools growing in his beard, he remarked. Did he do it on purpose, or did it happen that way? If that's the glue we know, said the bard, he's changed remarkably. The giant's pale eyes widened. What would have been a smile on a face of ordinary size became a grin that stretched longer than Terran's arm. Glue blinked and stooped closer. You've heard of me, then? he asked eagerly. Indeed, we have, put in Run. It's amazing, but we thought Lion... Prince Run, Terran warned. Glue, for the moment, seemed to have no wish to harm them. Instead, evidently, pleased by the consternation he had wrought among the companions, he was looking down at them with an expression of satisfaction. All the more intense, because it was so large. But until he had learned more of this strange creature, Terran had deemed it wiser to say nothing of their search. Lion? Glue quickly asked. What do you know of Lion? Since Run had already spoken, Terran had no choice but to admit the companions had stumbled upon Glue's hut. Disclosing no more than he had to, Terran told of finding the recipes for the potions. Whether Glue would take kindly to strangers rummaging among his possessions, Terran did not know. To his relief, the giant showed less concern about that than he did for the fate of the mountain cat. Oh, lion, cried Glue, if only she were here, anything to keep me company. At this, he buried his face in his hands, and the cavern echoed with his sobs. Now, now, said Fluter, don't take on so. You're lucky you weren't gobbled up. Gobbled? sniffed Glue, raising his head. Better if I had been. Any doom rather than this miserable cavern. There's bats, you know. They've always terrified me, swooping and squeaking in that nasty way they have. Crawly white worms come popping their heads out of the rocks and stare at you. And spidery things, and things that are just... Just things. They're the worst. It's enough to curdle your blood, I tell you. The other day, if I may call it day for all the difference it makes down here. The giant bent forward. His voice dropped to a roaring whisper and he appeared eager to recount these happenings at great length. Glue, Terran interrupted, we pity your plight, but I beg you, show us a way out of the cavern. Glue rocked his huge, scraggly head from side to side. Way out? I've never stopped looking for one. There isn't any. Not for me, at least. There must be, insisted Terran. How did you find your way into the cave in the first place? Please, show us. Find my way, replied Glue. I should hardly call it a position of finding. It would, it was Lion's fault, if only she hadn't broken from her cage the one time my potion was working so well. She chased me, out of my hut, ungrateful of her. 
but I forgive her. I still had the flask in my hand. Oh, how I wish I'd thrown the wretched potion away. I ran as fast as I could with Lion after me. Glue patted his forehead with a trembling hand and blinked sorrowfully. I've never run so fast or so far in my life, he said. I still dream of it when I'm not dreaming of worse. Finally, I found a cave and into it I went. I hadn't a moment to spare, continued Glue, sighing heavily. I swallowed the potion. Now that I've had time to think of it, I realize I shouldn't have. But it made Lion so much bigger, I thought it would do the same for me, so I might have a chance against her. And so it did, he added. In fact, it worked so quickly I nearly broke my crown on the ceiling of the cave. I kept on going. I had to squeeze along as fast as I could, going further and further down, always looking for bigger chambers, until I ended here. But then, alas, no passage was wide enough to let me out. I thought a great deal about it since that unhappy day. I often look back on it. Lou went on. He half closed his eyes and peered into the distance, lost in his own recollections. I wonder now, he murmured. I wonder now if... Fluter! Taran whispered in the bard's ear. Is there no way we can make him stop talking and show us one of the passages? Or should we try and slip by him and find it ourselves? I don't know, answered Fluter. From all the giants I've seen, yes, well, the truth of it is... Yes, well, the truth of it is, I've never seen any myself, though I've heard of them. Glue seems rather, how shall I say it, small. I don't think I'm making myself clear. But he was a feeble little fellow to begin with, and now he's a feeble little giant, and very likely a coward. I'm sure we could fight him if we could reach him. Our biggest risk would be getting stepped on and squashed. I am truly sorry for him, Terran began, but I don't know how we can help him, and we dare not delay our search. You're not listening, cried Glue, who had been talking on at some length before realizing he was talking mainly to himself. Yes, it's the same thing all over again, he sobbed. Even if I'm a giant, no one pays me any mind. Oh, I can tell you there are giants that would crack your bones and squeeze you until your eyes popped. You'd listen to them, you can be sure. But not Glue. Oh, it makes no difference about him, giant or no. Glue the giant, mewed up in a wretched cave, and who's to care? Who's even to see? Now, look here, answered Fluter with some impatience, for the giant had begun to sob and splash the companions with tears. You've only yourself to blame if you've put yourself into a stew. You meddled, and as I've said time and again, it leads to sad results. I didn't want to be a giant, protested Glue. Not at first, anyway. I thought once I would be a famous warrior. I joined the host of Lord Gorion when he marched against Lord Gast, but I couldn't stand the sight of blood. It turned me green, green as grass, and those battles, enough to make your head swim. All that clashing and smiting, the din alone is more than flesh can bear. No, no, it was absolutely out of the question. A warrior's life is one of hardship, Terran said, and it takes a stout heart to follow it. Surely there were other means to make a name for yourself. I thought then, I might become a bard, Glue went on. It turned out as badly. The knowledge you must gain, the lore to be learned. I'm with you there, old fellow, murmured Fluter, with a sigh of regret. I had rather the same experience. It wasn't the years of study explained Glue, in a voice that would have been forlorn had it not been so loud. I know I could have learned it if I'd taken the time. No, it was my feet. I couldn't bear all the tramping and wandering around, from one end of Pride Ain to the other. And always sleeping in a different place, and the change of water, and the harp rubbing blisters on your shoulder. We truly grieve for you, interrupted Terran, shifting restlessly. But we cannot tarry here. Glue had crouched down in front of the companions, and Terran tried desperately to think of the best means of getting past him. Please, please don't go, cried Glue as if reading Terran's thoughts, his eyes blinking frantically. Not yet. I'll show you a passage in a moment. I promise. Yes, yes, shouted Gurchy, at last able to bring himself to open his eyes and clamber to his feet. 
Gurji does not like caverns, and his poor tender head is filled with soundings and poundings. It was then I decided to become a hero, Glue eagerly went on, ignoring the impatience of the companions, to go about slaying dragons and such. But you can't imagine how difficult it is. Why, even finding a dragon is almost impossible. But I discovered one in Cantor of Moor. It was a small dragon, admitted Glue, about the size of a weasel. The cottagers had it penned up in a rabbit hutch, and the children used to go and look at it when they'd nothing else to do. But it was a dragon, nevertheless. I would have slain it, he added with a huge rattling sigh. I tried. But the vicious thing bit me. I still carry the marks. Terran tightened his grip on his sword. Glue, he said firmly, I beg you once again to show us the passage. If you will not... Then I thought I might become a king, Glue said hurriedly, before Terran could finish. I thought if I could wed a princess, but no, they turned me away at the castle gate. What else could I do? moaned Glue, shaking his head miserably. What was left for me but to try enchantments? At last I came upon a wizard who claimed to have a book of spells in his possession. He wouldn't tell me how it had befallen into his hands. But he assured me the magic it held was most powerful. It had once belonged to the House of Lear. Terran caught his breath at these words. Elenry is a princess of the House of Lear, he whispered to the bard. What tale is Clue telling us? Is he speaking the truth? It had come, Glu went on, from Ker Kulur itself. Naturally, I... Glu, tell me quickly, Terran cried. What is Ker Kulur? What has it to do with the House of Lear? Why, everything, replied Glu, as though surprised at Terran's asking. Ker Kulur is the ancient seat of the House of Lear. I should think everyone would know that. A very treasure house of charms and enchantments. Oh, my, yes. So as I was saying, naturally I believed I had at last found something to help me. The wizard was eager to be rid of the book, as eager as I was to have it. Terran's hands had suddenly begun to tremble. Where is Ker Kulur? he asked. How can we find it? Find it? I don't know if there is much left of it to find. They say the castle has been in ruins for years. Bewitched, too, as you might expect. And you should have some hard rowing to do. Rowing over land, said Fluter. Don't ask us to believe that. Rowing, repeated Glue, nodding sorrowfully. Long ago, Ker Kulur was part of Mona, but it broke from the mainland during a flood. Now it's no more than a speck of an island. Be that as it may, Glue went on. I took all the little treasure I had managed to save. Where is the island? Terran pressed. Glue, you must tell us. It is important for us to know. At the mouth of the Ella, replied Glue with a certain vexation at being interrupted once more. But that has nothing to do with what happened to me. You see the wizard. Terran's mind raced. Mag had taken Elenry to the Ala. He had needed a boat. Was Elenry's ancestral home his destination? His glance met Fluter's, and the bard's expression showed he had followed the same thought. The wizard, Clue continued, was in such haste that I had no chance to see the book until it was too late. He had cheated me. It was a book. A book of nothing. Of empty pages. Amazing! cried Prince Run. The very book we found! Worthless, sighed Glue. But since you found it, you may keep it. It's yours. A gift. Something to remember me by, so you won't forget poor Glue. Small chance of that, muttered Fluter. Finally, I turned to brewing my own potions, said Glue. I wanted to be fierce. I wanted to be strong. To make all Mona tremble. Oh, it was long labor, I tell you. Alas! You see the results, and the end of all my hopes. The giant glumly continued, Until you came along, you must help me escape from this frightful cavern. I can't stand the bats and the crawly things. It's too much, I tell you. Too much. It's nasty and horrid and sticky and wet. He cried in loud despair. I can't abide mold and mushrooms. Mold and mushrooms, I've had enough of them. He set to weeping again and his pitiful moans shook the cavern. Dalbin, my master, is the most powerful enchanter in Prydain, Terran said. It may be that he can find a means to help you, but it is your help we need now. The sooner we are free, the sooner I shall return to him. Too long to wait, 
moaned Glue. I'll be a mushroom myself by that time. Help us, Terran pleaded. Help us and we shall try to help you. Glue said nothing for a moment. His forehead wrinkled and his lips twitched nervously. Very well, very well, he sighed, climbing to his feet. Follow me. Oh, there's one thing you might do. It would be no bother to you. It's such a little thing, if you really wouldn't mind. So at least I might have the satisfaction, however brief. A tiny favor. Would you call me King Glue? Great Beelin. Great Beelin, shouted Fluter. I'll call you King, Prince, or whatever you choose. Only show us the way out of here. Sire. Glue's spirits seemed to lift as he shambled toward the dim reaches of the cavern. The companions scrambled down the ledge and hastened to keep up with his huge strides. Glue, having spoken to no one since his confinement, never left off talking. He had, he explained, tried to brew new potions, this time to make himself smaller. In one of the chambers, he had even set up a kind of workshop where a bubbling pool of steaming hot water served to boil his concoctions. Glue's cleverness in devising makeshift pestles and mortars, cookpots and basins from painstakingly hollowed-out stones surprised Terran and filled him with a pitying admiration for the desperate giant. But his mind turned over and over on itself, seeking an understanding that escaped him like a will-o'-the-wisp. Each time he drew close to it, he was certain the answer lay in the ruined halls of Caracolur, and certain the companions would find Elenry there. Impatient to be gone, he ran forward as Glue halted at a chimney-like shaft of rock. Close to the ground, the dark mouth of a tunnel opened. Farewell, sniffed Glue, pointing sorrowfully at the tunnel. Go straight on. You shall find your way. You have my word, Terran said, while Gurgi, Fluter, and Prince Run crawled into the opening. If it is in Dalvin's power, he will help you. Clutching the bauble, Terran bent and thrust his way past the jagged arch. Bats rose in a shrieking cloud. He heard Gurgi cry out in fear and raced ahead. Next moment he collided with a wall of stone and fell back on his heels while the bauble slipped from his grasp and dropped among the pebbles on the uneven ground. With a shout, Terran spun to see a massive rock pushed into the opening and flung himself toward it. Glue had sealed the passage. Chapter 12 The Tomb The bard, like Terran, had dashed headlong into the wall, and now struggled to his feet. Gurgi's yells rang above the screeching of the bats. Prince Run stumbled to Terran's side and threw his weight against the immovable rock. The bobble had rolled into a corner, but one glance in the light of the glowing sphere showed Terran there was no other way in or out of the chamber. Glue! Terran called, pushing with all his strength at the blocked passage. Let us out. What have you done? While Gurgi, jabbering furiously, beat his fists against the unyielding stone, Terran plunged against it once more. Beside him, he heard Prince run, gasping with his own efforts. Fluter shoved and heaved mightily, lost his footing, and sprawled to the earth. Little worm! The bard shouted at the top of his voice, Liar! You betrayed us! From the other side of the stone came Glue's muffled voice. I'm very sorry. Forgive me. Well, what else am I to do? Let us out, Terran demanded again, still straining to move the rock. With a sob half of anger and half of despair, he dropped to the earth and scrabbled desperately at the loose pebbles. Move aside, heavy stone, evil, wicked little giant shouted Gurgi. Take away lockings and blockings, or rageful Gurgi will smack your great feeble head. We would have done you a kindness, Terran cried, and you repay us with treachery. I say, that's true enough, called Prince Run. How do you expect anyone to help you if they're buried in here? Faint though it was, a sobbing sound drifted from beyond the blocked passageway. Too long, moaned the voice of Glue. Too long. I can wait no more in this ghastly cave. Who knows whether Dalbin would care about my fate? Very likely he wouldn't. It must be done now. Now! Glue, Terran said, forcing himself to be as calm and patient as he could, for he was convinced the giant had taken leave of his senses. There is nothing we alone can do for you, or we would have done it before this. But there is. There is. 
cried Glue. You shall help me with my potions. I'm sure I can brew another to bring me back to size. That's all I ask. Is that too much? If you want us to help you cook up more of those dreadful messes you fed Lion, called Fluter, you're taking a curious way to win our friendship. The bard hesitated, and his eyes widened in sudden dismay. Great Belen, he murmured, as he did with Lion. Even as the bard spoke, Taran's legs began to quake, for the same thought had occurred to him. Fluter, he whispered, he is indeed out of his wits. This cavern has driven him mad. Not a bit of it replied the bard. It makes excellent sense, in a nasty, horrid fashion. He has no one else to try his concoctions on. He pressed to the stone and cupped his hands around the mouth. You shan't do that, you wretched, sniveling worm, he shouted. We won't swallow your evil stews, even if you starve us. And if you try to cram them down our throats, you'll learn that a flam can bite. I promise, pleaded Glue. You won't have to swallow a thing. I'll take all the risks myself. Terrible risks they are, too. Suppose I should turn into a puff of smoke and blow away. You never know when you're dealing with such recipes. It could happen. Well, I wish it would, muttered Fluter. No, no, Glue went on. This won't hurt you a bit. You can be sure. It won't take more than a moment of your time, half a moment, and I shall only need one of you. Only one. You can't say that's asking too much. You can't be so selfish. Glue's voice had risen to a frenzy and he had begun shouting and wailing so loudly and rapidly, Terran could barely make out the words. But as he listened, Terran felt the blood drain from his heart. A chill held and shook him as Glue babbled on. Glue, he cried, despair welling up in him. What do you mean to do with us? Please, please try to understand, returned Glue's voice. It's my only chance. I'm sure it will work. I've thought it over carefully ever since I've been in this awful hole. I know I can brew the right potion. I have all I need except one thing, one tiny little ingredient. It won't hurt you a bit. You won't feel a thing, I swear it to you. Terran gasped in horror. You mean to kill one of us? There was a long silence. Finally, Glue's voice reached the companions again. It sounded as though Glue's feelings had been hurt. You make it sound so... so raw. Great feeling, shouted Fluter. Let me get my hands on your scrawny neck, and I'll make you sound raw. There was another silence. Please, said Glue faintly, try to look at it from my side. Gladly, said Fluter. Just push away that rock. Don't think it's so easy for me, Glue went on. I'm fond of all of you, especially the little fuzzy one. And I feel dreadful about the whole thing, but there's no chance anyone else will stop down here. You do understand that, don't you? You aren't angry. I'd never forgive myself if you were. Even now, he added plaintively, I don't know how I'll ever bring myself to pick out one of you. No, no, I can't. I haven't the heart. Don't ask me to put myself through that torment. No, you shall decide among you. That will be the best all around. Believe me, Glue continued, it'll be worse for me than for you. But I'll shut my eyes so I won't see which one of you it is. Then after it's over, we'll try to forget about it. We'll be the best of good friends those of you remaining, that is. I'll lead you out of here, I promise. We'll find Lion. Oh, it would be good to see her again, and all would be well. Don't go away, said Glue. I'll get my things ready. I won't keep you waiting. Glue, listen to me, called Terran. This is an evil deed you are planning. Set us free. No answer came. The rock did not move. Dig, friends, cried Fluter, drawing his sword. Dig for your lives. Terran and Gurji unsheathed their blades and, side by side, attacked the ground beneath the ponderous stone. With all their strength, they thrust into the rocky, unyielding earth. Their sword points rang out on the pebbles. Their sword points rang out on the pebbles. But try as they would, they could barely scrape away more than a shallow hole. Prince Run sought to force his sword under the rock, but proceeded only in snapping the point off his blade. Terran picked up the bobble. Bending to hands and knees, he scanned every portion of the prison, hoping to find some crack or tiny opening the companions could enlarge. The walls rose sheer and unbroken. He has trapped us well, said Terran, sinking to the ground. There is but one way out, the way Glue offers us. As I consider it, said Run, he asked for only one of us that would leave three to keep searching for the princess. Terran was thoughtful for a moment. 
For the first time, he said bitterly, I believe I had guessed where Mag meant to bring Elenry to Kaer Kalur. It is the strongest clue we have gained. Now it is useless to us. Useless? said Run. Not at all. We need only to do as Glue suggests, and the others can be on their way. Do you expect that feeble worm to keep his word? Fluter asked angrily. I would trust him every bit as much as I would trust Mag. Nevertheless, said Run, we can't be sure until we try. The companions fell silent at the Prince of Mona's words. Gurji, who had crouched on the earth and wrapped his woolly arms around his knees, stared wretchedly at Terran. Gurji will go, the creature whispered faintly, though he trembled so much he could hardly speak. Yes, yes, he will give his poor tender head for boilings and boilings. Valiant Gurji, murmured Terran. Indeed, I know you would give up your poor tender head, he patted the frightened creature. But there is no question of that. We must stand together. If Glue wants a life, he shall pay dearly for it. Fluter once again began digging and chipping at the rock. I agree with you entirely, he said. We must stand as one, to the extent that we have any choice at all. As soon as the little fellow comes back. Oh, drat and blast. I don't know why I keep thinking of him as a little fellow, except that he impresses me that way, no matter what his size. He'll surely seize one of us. He hasn't the honor of a flea or the heart of a gnat, but he's desperate. If we fight him, there's a good chance all of us will be slain. You cannot mean we should take Glue's bargain, said Terran. Certainly not, replied Fluter. I shall stand sword in hand and smite the little fellow about the knees, since I can't reach the head. I only mean to point out the risks. As far as his ridiculous idea of having us choose among ourselves is concerned, I don't think it is even worth a thought. Well, I do, said Prince Run. Terran turned in surprise to Run, not fully understanding his words. The Prince of Mona grinned at him, almost shyly. It's the only thing that will satisfy Glue, said Run. And for that, I think, it's a very cheap bargain. No life can be so cheaply held, Terran began. I'm afraid you're wrong, answered Run. He smiled back and shook his head. I've thought a great deal about this since we've been in the cavern, and there's no sense not facing facts. I... I don't see that I've been any help whatever. On the contrary, I've brought nothing but ill luck. Not that I mean to, but it seems that's the way of it with me. So if any of us can be dispensed with, why... I should have to say that person is myself. It's true, Run quickly went on, disregarding Terran's cry of protest. I'm delighted to be of some use for once, especially if it will help Ellen me. I assure you, I won't mind in the slightest. As Glue says, it will only take a moment. There's not one of you who wouldn't give up his life for a companion, Run added. Fluter Flam offered his life for ours in Lion's Lair. Even now, poor Gurji is willing to offer his. He raised his head. A bard, a humble creature of the forest, an assistant pig-keeper. Run's eyes met Terran's, and in a low voice he said, Can a prince do less? I doubt I should ever really be able to measure up to being a true prince. Except in this. Terran looked at Run for a long moment. You speak of measure. I had measured you as no more than a feckless princeling. I was wrong. You are a truer prince and better man than ever I believed. But this sacrifice is not yours to make. You know my oath to your father. Prince Run grinned again. Indeed, a heavy oath, he said. Very well, I shall lift it from you. I say, he added, it's astonishing, but I wonder what became of all the bats. This concludes chapter 12. Thank you for listening, and remember, have a good day. You deserve it.